Cześć, mam na imię Andrzej. Hello everyone, my name is Andrzej. Welcome to the second video from our little series of tutorials about Photonic Integrated Circuit in VPI and Photonics Design Suite. If it's the first time you can see me, you can catch up with what was shown before watching our previous video, PAM4 Transmitter Part 1. Today I would like to focus on three very useful topics. How to do a hierarchical design, define parameter expressions and use initialization scripts. In this guide we are going to create a dual parallel Maxender modulator that will serve as a basic for creating a final design of PAM4 transmitter. What's in the name? But let's take a look at the naming convention of the hierarchical elements we are all going to apply today. Like in Cosmos, we have stars, galaxies and universe. The main schematics is called a universe. It consists of a network of stars and galaxies and it is the top layer of any simulation. A galaxy represents the next level, contains stars and it may contain the other galaxies. Finally, a star is the lowest level simulation element. Now that you know who is who in our schematics, let us take a look at the example created in the previous video. We'll be doing a few tricks here. The first is a conversion trick. Do you see this nice little virtual galaxy? Do you think it might need conversion? If you right click on it, you can convert it to a regular galaxy. We can name it MZI. As we can see, it now appears in the resources folder of our schematics. Next question. Do you like the default icon? For people with creative personalities, let's change it for other picture. Looks better, doesn't it? Unfortunately, when we check our galaxy, we can see that it has no parameters inside. Obviously, some more magic is required to make it all work. Now, we want to right-click on the MZI galaxy and take a look inside. Suppose we would like to make control voltage a schematic parameter. First, we need to create a new category and name it, for example simulation, and then we can create the control voltage parameter itself. We are going to set the type and default values on it. In addition, a minimum and maximum value can be added. There we go. Let us save our galaxy and check that the created parameter appears now on the galaxy parameter list. Now we need to assign the parameter to the global control voltage parameter that we created in the previous video. Congrats, folks! We have just created the first compound building block. I hope you are not yet tired of the cosmic elements and magical tricks. Let's now create a very real dual parallel Maxender modulator. For this, we need to copy our galaxy, rotate it and connect it via Y couplers. We want to drive only the top MZM, so we need to set the control voltage of the lower MZM to zero. So we are now creating a virtual galaxy from our components and setting the simulation domain to S matrix. We can also run the optimization sweep from our previous video and investigate the dependence of the optical transmittance of the DPMZM on the applied voltage. What can I say? If you are like me, you simply enjoy all things optimization. We can see that the voltage VP required for including a phase change of P is about 9.1 volt. Now let's take a deeper look at the electro-optic modulator module. Inside this module, we can see it is built from a straight waveguide module. And our good old control voltage parameter is directly related 
to the wavegate effective index and, which is more, in the current example it has already been described beautifully with a Python expression. To make our simulation even more intriguing, let's imagine a situation in which we do have some random phase shift in the MZI branches. This situation can be easily described as a Python function. We can open the initialization script by clicking the Python icon. Then we can create a simple function to add additional random phase variation. We can conveniently call that function directly from the parameter editor. One thing is important here. We should remember to change the parameter type to Python. Let's run our sweep again and compare it with the previous results. Amazing how simple it is, isn't it? Stay tuned! In our next video we are going to finalize our pump for transmitter. We will take a look at the time and hybrid time and frequency domain simulation, resolve deadlock issues, do multiple simulation runs and visualize eye diagrams. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed preparing it for you. If you find it useful I will be very happy to receive your feedback. Besides, if you want to learn more about VPI Photonics, our product and services, you know where to find us. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Ciao!